Hi, hello, hi. So, before we start, I just wanna, I wanna address, address the thing. Uh, I have a new light. It is a ring light, if you couldn't tell by the obnoxious reflection in my glasses. I hope that you like this setup because it is much easier for me. Um, it's less dangerous because my cat can't really knock this down as easily as he can knock down my old lights. And I just think it's nice and really fancy. All right, cool, let's get into today's topic. Today, I wanted to talk about disability. Wow, shocking. Aaron, you never, you, you? Disabil- what? Since when? The reason why I want to talk about this, and it's something very in particular, I want to talk about the actual term disability. So the reason why I want to talk about this is for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I just came back from a trip where I gave two workshops to teachers and artists on how to adapt their classrooms and their projects to kids with learning disabilities. I will actually make a video specifically about that topic because I think that it's really interesting and it really is worth talking about. But also I want to talk about this because there have been a couple of times where online I've got to messages from people or responses on pictures or tweets where people say, you know, why do you choose to call yourself disabled? I went through all of these things and I chose not to call myself disabled. You're not disabled, don't call yourself that. You're differently abled. You're limiting yourself. You shouldn't identify yourself with your disability. You're so much more than your disability. I don't agree with a lot of that and I wanted to make this video about why I don't agree with it. And disclaimer, you do not have to agree with me. Particularly if you are a person with a disability yourself, you absolutely do not need to identify the way that I identify. Whatever terms are most empowering to you, go ahead and use those. I am just giving my humble opinion as another person with a disability. So as you likely know at this point, I have autism spectrum disorder, I have ADHD, I have OCD, I have EDS. I have these disabilities. And why do I choose to use the term disabled? Uh, well, it's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I will acknowledge why I don't like the term differently abled, because that was one that has been suggested to me. You can go ahead and, of course, identify with that term if you want to. I personally do not identify with it. The reason being is that I find the term differently abled to be kind of patronizing. By definition, everybody is differently abled. We all have different abilities, therefore, are differently abled. And if you are reserving that term to exclusively refer to disabled people, at that point, you might as well just refer to us as disabled. You're just finding this kind of cutesy word to make yourself as an able-bodied or neurotypical person feel better about the term disability because you inherently think that being disabled is a bad thing or you associate bad things to it, so that is not something that I super agree with because I don't think there's anything wrong with being disabled. I don't think that disabled is a bad word. I don't think that it's a bad thing. I understand that it is a stigmatized word, but that is why I want to reclaim the word. And here's what I mean by that. So why reclaim the term disabled? What does that even mean? A lot of people don't like the term disabled, as I said, because it implies that we can't do anything or that we are less than capable, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The thing is, the way that I see it is that we are disabled, not necessarily by our disabilities, but by society, by the way that society is set up, by lack of accessibility, lack of accommodations, therefore not granting us equal access to spaces, to education, to work, to social gatherings, to events, it, it really, it, the list goes on. I think it's important to be using the term disabled because it acknowledges the oppression that we do experience from this society that is set up for able-bodied and neurotypical people. So that's the way that I see it. That's when I'm saying I'm disabled, I'm stating two things. Firstly, I'm a person who requires certain accommodations and certain tools in order to be granted granted equal access. I am also addressing the oppression that I and other disabled people experience by society, because society caters to able-bodied and neurotypical people. Society does not cater to disabled people. There do exist accommodations, but as you know, those accommodations are likely not going to be there unless they are aware that there is a disabled person attending an event, for example, and even at that, it still might not be an accessible event. So for example, how many times have you gone to university and every single one of your classes had an ASL interpreter? Likely not that often. You may have some interpreters in some classes, but it's probably because there is a student in that class who has asked for that accommodation or has paid for that accommodation, who is deaf or hard of hearing, or for whatever other reasons for which they require an ASL interpreter. So that's an example of just an inaccessible space. It is only accessible once there is an accommodation made, once we are provided with a tool. The instructors do not automatically know ASL unless you're going to a specialized school, and they don't have interpreters just kind of like at the ready in every class signing just in case there's someone who requires an ASL interpreter. Although I think that's a shame because there are plenty of people who could benefit from an interpreter. I think we should all learn ASL in secondary school 
school, primary school. I just, I don't understand why that's not part of the curriculum yet, but okay. You may think that just because there are available accommodations that all spaces are accessible, but like I said, they are not accessible unless they know that someone requires this tool to access the space, which is why it is important that we are identifying ourselves as disabled. Disabled is a label that we need in order to have equal access to things in this society. I understand why a lot of people don't like the word. Absolutely, I get it. It's a stigmatized word and oftentimes people will see our disability and they won't see us, etc, etc, etc. I, I get that, but again, I think that it is so important to be reclaiming this word because of the fact that if we don't use the term disabled, it doesn't make us any less disabled. It doesn't mean that we don't have our disabilities. Not using the term just sort of ignores the oppression that we will experience regardless as to whether or not we're using that word. The oppression exists. The use of the term disabled is not what is oppressing us. Society is oppressing us. Lack of accessibility is oppressing us. The word itself is not oppressive. The word itself is what is giving us access, occasionally, sometimes, when accommodations are available. So the next point I wanted to make was, firstly, why do you have to identify with your disability? And that kind of leaks into like the importance of diagnosis and why diagnoses are a useful and oftentimes really crucial tool to us. So I get a lot of this, and I know a lot of other people get this, where it's like, you're so much more than your disability. You just, you shouldn't identify with your disability, etc., etc., etc. And this is also followed by the whole like you should be using people first language for those of you who don't know people first language is just basically this instead of saying I am disabled so instead of saying let's say I'm autistic I would say I am a person with autism so instead of saying I'm disabled I am a person with a disability the whole theory behind people first language is that we are people before we are our disability it's to humanize people with disabilities because oftentimes we are seen as our disability instead of being seen as a person and this is to help people realize that there's more more to us than just our disability. There's more to me than just me being autistic. I am more than just autistic. I am also funny, I think, uh, and shy, and painfully awkward, and trans, and male. I don't know, but there are plenty of words to describe me, so that's the point of people first language. Here's where I don't think it makes a lot of sense. As I just said, I'm shy, I'm painfully awkward, I'm funny. I think. I'm male. I'm transgender. Nobody corrects me when I describe myself with those words. When I say I'm funny or when I say I'm shy, nobody stops me and says, no, no, no. You are a person with funniness. You are a person with shyness. You are a person with maleness. Nobody, nobody, nobody stops me from, from, from using those words. If I say that I'm intelligent, nobody's going to stop me and say, no, no, you are a person with intelligence. It, it's just, do you see where it becomes kind of counterproductive to be using the people first language. If you are only enforcing people first language when you're talking about something that you think is bad, then you are continuing to feed into the stigmatization of the word and you are continuing to enforce the idea that that word is bad by making it so different, by telling people they shouldn't identify with it. Nobody tells me that I'm more than my funniness, I'm more than my intelligence, I'm more than my maleness when I use any of those other words to describe myself. And if the structure of a sentence needs to be changed in order to remind you that disabled people are humans, like if that's, if, if that's what you need in order to humanize us and to remind yourself that we're more than our disabilities, then that is an issue with ableism. That is not an issue with the order, the words that we are using to describe ourselves. And also telling us how to describe ourselves and controlling or attempting to control the language that we use to describe ourselves in an attempt to stop oppression, um, you're actually doing the opposite. It's actually pretty oppressive, especially when you're not part of that group itself. So you're taking away more agency from us in limiting the language that we get to use and limiting the way that we get to describe ourselves because you think you're being this savior, which is its own complex. That's its own, that, that's, uh, 
That's a whole topic right there. But yeah, so do, do you see where it becomes a little counterintuitive? And again, if you're only doing it with disabilities or you're only doing it with things that you think are inherently negative, then you are reinforcing the idea that being disabled is a negative thing or that disabilities are a negative thing. So hopefully that, that, made, that made sense. Lastly, why I think diagnoses are important and why being specific in your diagnosis is useful. It's not a like, oh, we get it, you have a disability. Why do you have to specify like, okay, you have autism and ADHD and EDS. It's like, well, because they're all different, although there is a lot of overlap and a lot of it could be related, they require different accommodations. So I require physical space accommodations because of my EDS, a place that is full of stairs and uneven ground is just, it's not a place that I could go to. Going to a concert that doesn't have any any seats, go like going to an outdoor concert where you need to stand up, that is an inaccessible space to me. Going to a pride event, like, like the pride parade, and not being able to sit down, that is an inaccessible space to me. Going to a pride event that doesn't have any quiet spaces is inaccessible to me because of my autism, because I will become overstimulated and I need to be able to escape stimulation. Going to class and Having a teacher who puts slides up but doesn't post them before the class, doesn't allow you to have a copy of the slides, that, that makes that class inaccessible to me. Because if I'm writing down what's on the slides, I can't listen to you. And if I'm listening to you, I can't write what's on the slides. I actually can't. So I'm at a disadvantage in that space. We're not all starting on the same line. Some of us are starting a little lower and we need that little booster seat to get us, just to get us to an equal level where we just we have equal access to just anything and we have equal access to academic success. Do you get what I'm saying? My diagnoses are relevant because that is how I will have access to the tools that I need. That is how the appropriate accommodations will be made. If they just know there's someone with a disability coming into class, how will they know what my disability is? Do they know if they need an interpreter? Do they know if the teacher should be posting the slides beforehand? Do they know if I need a note taker in class? Do they know if I need a speech to text program so that I could dictate my essays instead of having to write them? Is, it, is there a mobility issue? Like they, they literally won't know. So how are you supposed to accommodate someone if you don't know what a accommodations to make. And I mean, in a perfect world, all accommodations would be available at all times to anyone and we wouldn't have to identify ourselves as disabled or able-bodied because everything would just be accessible and it would just, society would be set up for everyone. But that's not the world we live in. And avoiding using language and telling us not to identify as disabled and telling us that we're more than our disabilities, all of that, as empowering as you think it may be, it actually does the opposite. It takes power away from us, it takes opportunities away from us, and it makes spaces less accessible to us. So that's my opinion on the term disabled and on diagnosis and on people first language, all that good stuff. Hopefully this video made sense. I don't know, I feel like it was kind of all over the place. I've been having trouble focusing, but I feel like I also say that at the end of all of my videos because I always have trouble focusing because I have ADHD. Anyway, let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you have any questions. Go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. Again, you don't have to agree with me. This is just my opinion. Not everything I say is law, you know, like I, I'm just I'm just giving my opinion on things and so on. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and a great week and take care of yourselves. All right. Thanks. Bye.